All right, everybody. We have Dan Stoudemire. Coach, you can go ahead and start with a few remarks and we'll go right to questions. All right. You know, first, uh, first thing first, give BC credit. You know, they thought they did a good job tonight of, uh, <clears throat> you know, executing the things that they needed to. Um, we tried to, you know, limit, you know, post and, you know, the other guys, Harris and McLaughlin. McLaughlin had a good game, you know, and, um, you know, overall for us, we just, we got to do better with leads. You know, it's a lot of growing pains. I, I, I think I understand it as, as frustrated as I am sitting here about the loss of this game. Um, I, I understand, like, when you're, when you're, you know, year one and you're trying to build and you're going through the process and trying to figure things out, like, sometimes the ball don't bounce your way. It's like I, I've seen it a hundred times. You know, I got drafted by an expansion team. You know, uh, towards the end of my career, I was, I was with a team that was, that wasn't really good in Memphis, but they had really good young players: Kyle Lowry, Mike Conley, uh, Rudy Gay. You know, um, and you know when you're going through that process, like it's gonna be nice like this. You know, no matter what. You know, and and you just got to keep on fighting. And I think that. Um, at some point, we'll learn from it. You know, unfortunately, uh, it doesn't help right now with with the way I think those kids are feeling in the locker room. Um, but you know, that's that's all we can do. We just got to continue to grow um, because we didn't get it done tonight. We had our chances. You know, there's a lot of other things that was going on, but we had our chances. So you know, you again, I, I say, uh, for me, um, as you building something. Um, you got to keep your eye on the big picture and stay process driven. And this is a part of the process. It seemed like there were maybe four calls there. Uh, and then the, in that final three minutes, the reversal on the TV timeout on the flagrant. And then kind of a sequence of questionable calls. Uh, if you watch the replay, like a block that was called a foul, like things like that. and. You obviously uh, lost your temper for a second, got teed. But like, kind of, what were you seeing? What was the explanation for some of the calls? Uh, it was frustrating for you to to kind of see that. Uh, you know, for me, uh, again, I'm I'm a fight for my team. That's all I was doing. You know, we trying to we trying to you know we trying to get the game back. You know, you fight, you fight, you fight. You're just fighting for your team. Um, you know, whatever they call, they call whatever I feel about them. I feel about them, you know, but it's part of the game. Again, I've been in this a long time. I've been on both sides of it, um, but um, I feel bad. <clears throat> I just feel bad because, you know, you, 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 they played so hard, but there's just breakdowns and things that happen within a game that, again, I'm just telling you, it's the crazy, the, the craziest stuff happened when you're going through the process of trying to be successful. I'm just telling you the craziest stuff happens. And, you know, um, it doesn't matter whether it's a loose ball right in front of a guy, right in front of our players and, and he slips and don't get it and the other team gets it back, hits three. Like, you know I mean, I'm just telling you, like, it's, it's part of it. So, um, for me, I'm not going to place no blame on nobody because, again, I, like I said, we had our, we had our chances and we, we, you know, we just got to keep growing from this. Along those lines, how, how do you keep your team, you know, and their spirits up? If you know this sort of crazy stuff is going to happen, how do you you know, keep them focused and just let them know, like, let's just keep building, let's keep working? Well, I I think that they'll be fine eventually. You know, I mean, I I, I always say I say the same thing. You know, win or lose, you know, twelve o'clock, you got to let it go, and um, you got to get ready for the next one. Um, and and I think, you know, with us. It's all the little things. I, I just, I don't know how much better you're going to get in season practicing, you know, on the court when you play Tuesday, Tuesday or Wednesday and Saturday for the next two months, two and a half months. But we just got to keep on beating down that film. And see, that's the process that, you know, a lot of them I don't think actually have been through it before like that, you know, because 
for me, like you got the attention to detail is really important, and it's important for, you know, for instance, the point guard. He got to know what the five man doing. You know, you can't just know what you do on the court. You got to know what everybody do on the court. Like it's a part of it, right? And like every scenario, you know, that we that we that we've had in the game, we've had in practice. Every scenario that we've had in the game, we've talked about it. And the biggest thing is is being able to take the game plan and put it on the floor. It don't always work that way. There are tweaks that go into it. I always say this, anything on the floor where guys are communicating, it supersedes anything that the coaches said. Because you know what? What I see from the sideline might be different from what they see on the floor. And I've been a player, so I understand exactly what that is. So I just, for me, I just want our guys to, you know, think about the the little things that we didn't do well. And then hopefully that can help us in the next game come Tuesday. First half, you only had three turnovers. And of course, that leads to better chances of scoring. Second half, I think you had eight turnovers. Uh, a lot of empty possessions when you had chances maybe to increase the lead or or come back. Uh, you know, h how difficult is it for them lately to put together those two halves that you're looking for? Well, I mean, we haven't put together two halves all season. You know, we played 28 minutes here, 30 minutes there. But what I'll say about that is, is the problem with turnovers is when you don't get attempts at the rim. Simply that, you know, and so um, I think most basketball teams, not just Georgia Tech, are most teams are better when they play defense. When you limit a team to one shot and you get out and run, everybody like to run, right? So when it becomes a half court game and not, now you're asking everybody to think, now it becomes tough. Now everybody has to remember things. That becomes tough. Now, you know, you, you got to have people that maybe might think for want somebody else on the floor. It, it is our, it is my job to try and put guys in, in, in positions so they can show their strengths and hide their weaknesses. That's what good coaches do. I believe that. I, I truly believe that. And so the thing about it is, uh, in those moments, you know, I know who my team is through and through. You know, I, I, I believe me, I, I know exactly what each player is. I know their strengths, I know their weaknesses, I know what they can and can't do. And I think sometimes what happens to us is we, get, we, we, we become prisoners of the moment and we just start playing basketball. We don't know the score, we don't know the clock. And so the empty possessions turn in, the empty possession on the offensive being turned into not getting a stop on the defensive end. And after a while, what has to happen is then I only had one timeout. And so I was trying to get through, you know, and see if we can, you know, turn the tide. Didn't happen. But, you know, it's again, it's a learning process. All this is a learning process, I promise you. Because from the first day I got here, like the stuff that I'm talking about, it was like a foreign language to my team. And they're getting better. They're getting better. Don't always see the result of it. But they are getting better. Coach Sotomayor, they uh, NBC scored 57 points in the second half, and it seemed like there was some pretty good variability in the team in your team's defensive intensity. Do you agree? And if so, is there much you can do about that in the swing of a game? Is there somebody you can call on or the timeout? I guess you try that. But anything else to do? You know, it's hard. Um, again, you know when you know you. You know, you know some things with your team. I think it's human nature for kids to play better on defense when they're scoring. And so we only scored 36 points in the second half, and I think that hurt us. You know, we're never going to be a good team, um, you know, if we're walking the ball up the floor, and, you know, you're taking the ball out the net. And that and that was the biggest – that that to me was the biggest thing. I think that when they look on the scoreboard, you know, and we come in, we start the second half, they see a cushion when they see a 16-point lead. I don't see a cushion. I see we got to get better. We need to put our foot on people's necks, and we got to get, we got to get hungry. We got to get another stop, score, stop, score, stop, score. Then that turns into three kills, and then now three kills come into another three. Now you're getting kills, and so I think, you know, what I got to do 
is I got to get guys to understand that we're really good when we play defense, when we have intensity, and we can't re we can't rely on our offense to help us play defense because it don't work like that because defense is actually the only thing that travels. And, you know, I thought in the first half, you know, we were making shots, so obviously we play D. So in the second half, we didn't make as many shots, and so I think that, that that's our defense suffered a bit. So. You know, we'll, we'll continue to work on that. It's, I don't, I don't, you know, intensity and all the different things, cliches. After a while, you know, you have to, you have to, you have to look within yourself, and and you gotta, you know, you gotta figure it out. You know, and we'll help them. We'll go Chad and Kelly to wrap up. Is uh, Mari Abram still with the team? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mar Mari Is he had, here tonight? No, he had the flu. He's he's been he's been out with the flu. Him and Soiree are out with the flu. Yeah, both of them are with uh, both of them are with the flu. It was a little bit like uh, some my uncle likes to call the NBA comeback, where you have you have a game in the NBA where 20, they're down twenty and come back third quarter. Like, is that like a teachable thing for your guys? Like to see that hey, even if we're up sixteen or whatever, like this is not when you go into cruise control and just play. It seemed like they kind of went into cruise control. Was that sort of what you saw a little bit? It didn't feel like an NBA comeback to me. I mean, I've been in a lot. I've been in a lot of them NBA comeback yeah, now. I mean, I don't know. Again, I'm a little different. I, I teach different. I, I when I teach, I critique. It's never personal. I don't really know. I don't really know. If we. I don't. Now we can learn from it, but I don't know how much we can learn from it when. You gotta be able to you you gotta be able to see it for what it is, but then you gotta be able to leave that moment right there and get better. I think that's a kid thing, you know what I mean. And so I've probably been with a handful of kids in my life in college that I've coached. Aaron Gordon came the first day and said, "Coach, how do I be here for eight months?" Will Barton said, Coach, how'd I be here for 24 months? T.J. McConnell said, I want to be a pro. Those were people that let you bleed into them because they wanted the truth. In order to get better, sometimes you got to hear the truth. <laughs> so, like, we've talked about a lot of things that have happened today, and I do believe that our guys can get better, but there's a lot of times when they haven't been hearing the truth, so it kind of hurts when you hear it, but it's critique. It's not personal. We got to get better at taking the critique and not thinking it's personal because I like all oh, y'all. I don't have no agenda. The only agenda I got is winning. And so no different than I get critique. When I look at my phone, it'd be, you know, it's a bunch of coaches. <laughs> they go tell me what I didn't do. or what didn't, And I'm all right with that. I'm totally all right with that. I just want these kids to get something from it because I do know this. If they just listen, you know, they'll be so much better. Because, again, I'll go back to what I said a little earlier. I don't know how much better you can get on the floor. But I do know you can get better mentally in, pre in preparation for the game, you know, so.